aficionados. I'm here with Jim Owens. And if you want to see enthusiasm personified and why it's always great to do something you love so it's not work, here's your man. So, Jim, I guess I could say these are somewhat your baby, the 2024. Um, I've been blessed to have been involved in Mustang on Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6, and now Gen 7. And this is by far the best platform and the best Mustangs we have ever done. And I first have to thank you. One of my top 10 moments ever in my career, like I kind of like ranked yeah. them through, yeah. was brought to you by you when we were at the Quail remember, and yep. we were honoring Carol yep. and I got to drive up CSX 2000 up on there and my hands were like gripped on the, the, the steering wheel thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with it? But one of my top 10 moments from work and I've had quite a bit of them <laughs> and so were those, brought to me by you. So for those of you that don't know, CSX 2000 is Cobra number one. And so the whole Shelby legend Started with that car. Yes, it goes out from that car. Painted multiple colors. Yep. So we yep. could give it to different magazines and make it think like it was a different one. And when we had it in the Shelby Museum and around the, the nose, yeah. you could see the paint on there. Uh, the Miller estate, the Miller family has that car now. And they still let Shelby and us use it. So they bought it at auction. Um, and they and still it was let, like 14 million. 14 million. Yeah. And, and they were afraid it was going to go across the pond. Um, and so they stepped up and they, you know, they've been huge supporters. Larry yes. was one yep. of Carol's yep. biggest fans. Um, that's where we did the racing school. Remember the old Mustang challenge series back you there? Know, and I pray to God, this, this is interesting because I pray to God that they, if you want to leave it unrestored, fine, but mechanically fix it. Yeah. Well, you because, know, Carol needs to make us drive it. But the thing is, no, no, no. Oh, you mean mechanically? Yeah. Make because, sure, yeah. So here's here's kind of a weird story. And boy, we're starting a way I never thought we would. But this is a true story. So when I was driving CSX uh, 2000 around the track out in Vegas. Yep. And I should say pottery while you're driving it. <laughs> well, it was so wild was I could feel the car doing this. Yep. And I'm even getting goose pimples now as I think about it. And it's not because it was missing, like the plugs were dirty or anything. It's because the spirit of the car wanted, wanted to, to run. run. Absolutely. And it's been so friggin' long. So you felt that. Oh yeah. And because and it, yes, it's, it's it's the damnedest thing. And so guys, let the car friggin' run. You know, get it, take it out, it, reassemble it, get everything done right so it can go run. If you want to leave it in dilapidated condition, fine. We'll have to make sure that the Millers try to take that on. And and you know, one of the other stories when we were together when we did the. Uh, the 50 year yeah. celebration of the Cobra. Remember up at Laguna? Yes. Yes. Where we brought all the Cobras out at the at the top yes. of the raceway and I got to drive probably three of the first 10 CSX 2000s that day. That's another one that's on yeah. the top 10. So basically what you're saying is your job sucks. Um, it is, I tell my girls, right? But if you're gonna get up and drive down the Southfield freeway for 30 years, you better get up and enjoy your job. I've been blessed. I've been absolutely yes. blessed. And, it, and this is something that we do like to talk about here uh, at Mark Media is if you love what you do, very rarely is it working for you. Younger viewers out there, never before in history has the barrier to entry to what you love to do been lower than now. Pursue what you love. Yes. Now these Mustangs. Back. So <laughs> tell, tell us about Sorry, your I got off on a tangent there, no, Winston. Good, good tangent. So tell us about your current love. So this is a seventh generation, yes. right? Everybody says, oh, you know, start my 64 and a half. No such thing, right? They are all titled 65s. Yeah. It's just an early yeah, build yeah. 64. Yeah. But if you take longest continuous running sports car nameplate in the United States, thanks to Corvette for forgetting a model year. Can you imagine the marketing guy who decided that they, oh, we're just yeah. going to roll production and go to the next year. Yeah. So longest running continuous running nameplate. But that's foundation, like heritage, right? right? What we did with the designers, and Chris Walter, who was the lead exterior designer on this, Mustang owner himself, has worked on Gen 5, Gen 6, and now Gen 7. Um, yeah, what we so did there's is, real DNA in the team. Oh, my they gosh, got it. yeah. I mean, like, like, like uh, from the, like, Ed Krenz, who was the yeah. chief nameplate engineer. He's, is he still around? Yeah, now he's moved on to Bronco. We have Lori coming in okay, now that we've it. gotten this ready to got launch. It. Um, fantastic. He, and, like, even Carl yeah. Widman, like, yep. who did the Shelby GT500, that, yep. you know, the, the last version of the GT500. But what we did is we took that foundation. So it's not looking backwards, Winston. It's taking that foundation and putting it into the 21st century. Yep. 
So a lot of the things, now this is the Mustang GT. Yep. This is the one we're gonna take across the stage. Um, the winning bidder at Barrett Jackson yep. gets the opportunity for a full donation to JDRF to order the Mustang GT of their choice. This uh, is the car that's going across the block. Um, so what, what, what are some of the major differences? If you can see the nose, that sloping nose a little bit, yep. what it reminds me a lot of is think of the Cobra, Yep. That the Cobra lip, right? But it has that to go down more of a slope down for the air extractor yep. that you yep. have here. But this is the lowest coefficient of drag Mustang we've ever done with the highest available downforce right now. So if you look at that, that's three points on a triangle, right? Cooling, yep. downforce, aerodynamic drag. Two of those points of the triangle, best we've ever done, and still allows the air in for yes. the cooling. So you can see that from that front snout, and this has the black package with the, yep. with the black pony associated with it. Unmistakably Mustang, but black. in a 21st technology, yes. 21st yep. century. Now, of course, the tri-bar lights, right? Yep. So the high AD, the three light bars that represent the pony tri-bar that we have on the back and the brake lights on there that come up here. And one of the things that's so cool, bring your key up with it. Within 200 feet, I think plus or minus, we'll have to get the exact yep. one. You can hit your button and you can do the approach lighting. Yep. That will actually turn on and sequence the lights in the sequential, comes over here and projects the pony puddle lamp. And then if you really had a, like a cars and coffee on a Sunday, want to just impress your friends, remote rev. So from 50 feet away, you start the car, you turn through, you hit the buttons, and there's a way to go and through and program it. Manual transmission? No, no, automatic okay. transmission. Yeah, because yeah, you got to have the touch interrupt switch. Really yeah. No, so yeah, no, no. Lawyers wouldn't let us do that. <laughs> um, so what, what it does is then it takes you through the entire exhaust configuration. So you can be sitting there out of the car show, nobody around, boom, it starts, yeah. and then it takes it through its rev curve. Not something you need in a car. But, but deep down in places you don't go at night, you want that in your car. But anyway, so the design. Then you can see the sloping hood that is always appropriate for Mustang. The short wheel lip that goes over yep. the top. Still unmistakably Mustang, but looking at the 21st century technology, basically, and the design, forward looking. You and I are not getting any younger, Winston. And what we have to do is bring in the new people in there. So we thought we'd attempt yeah. it with exterior design and some of the interior technology we'll talk about. But as you go back down through the car, it looks like that four point stance, yes. rugby, your haunches yeah. up a little bit, like yeah. you're ready to go and ready to spring forward, looks fast standing still. The slope of the A pillar, the down slope down through the back, not on the convertible obviously in there, is some of that historic Mustang design but looking towards the future. And then if you go all the way back to the rear, and this is the performance pack wing, right? So it's raised up off the spoiler. The normal one sits a little bit lower. What you have is that sloping. And if you see how we yeah, did- This is a cutout that's- We did the totally concave yeah. version yes. of this. Yeah. So if you think of our Mustang family, right? The Mustang Mach-E, all yep. electric, right? Yep. You know, zero to 60 as fast as my GT500. Um, you know, that's a performance vehicle. That has the convex yep. of the three. Yep. This has the concave of the yep. three. So it ties it in, but it gives it that look and still the sequential tail lamps out there. The quad tips exhaust with the active exhaust valve, 480 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated five liter, fourth generation Coyote motor. When we launched the 07 GT500 with Carroll, and it was a 5.4 iron block with 500 horsepower. That's right, supercharged. Yeah. A supercharged version yes. of it and a heavy iron block. Out of the 5 liter, we are now taking 480 with the active valve exhaust and the performance package, 486. And in the dark, dark horse, horse even 100 bigger. horsepower yeah. per liter. Yeah. Naturally which, aspirated. Yeah, which is always cut because remember when it was 100 per cubic inch? Yeah, now it's 100 per liter. <laughs> per liter is, is the big deal. And that's, I yeah. mean, that's the 500 horsepower we're all excited about. So this is the Mustang GT. Now the interior we've changed completely, and we'll kind of go you over that when we look at the convertible. Yeah, let's look over there. So here I am with Jim. We were just talking about uh, how the interior has been completely redone. And holy Toledo, now I'm gonna sound old school. Wait till you see the video game technology that's going on here. It's really insane. The one thing that I will say is 
I first saw configurable dashes in a Lamborghini Reventon, and I thought, okay, okay. This, is the, this is the future. Where That's 15 go. plus years ago, and this is so far beyond what I ever imagined. So, Jim, um, you, you, when we were talking earlier, for you, this was almost like your, I can't say your baby, but in a way it was, because it's really insane. It is, is. And, and, and Winston, you know, we're, like I said, we're not getting any younger, right? Yep. And eventually yep. we're gonna have to bring new people into the genre. And technology is the way that they do it. Now they still want the performance and they still want that exterior design, you know, that looks, yep. that makes it, hey, I make this car look good. But then you want the technology. If you think of, you know, the Gen Zs, they're, yep. Yep. they're in there playing with their phones, they're, yeah, they're like personalizing yeah. their games. And so what we did is we changed the interior to try to bring the technology up. And when we did the focus groups, where we had our age group, right, mm -hmm. sitting in there, they were like, <laughs> one of the guys said, oh gosh, I think I could launch a rocket from this thing, <laughs> right? And then the, the younger generation across the board, you know, for all of the younger audiences were like, oh my God, this is about time. So what you're gonna see in here is this center stack that's connected behind the magnesium yep. screen. First thing you're gonna notice if you're a Mustang person is, hey, we're no longer doing the dual eyebrow. Yep. Yep. You wouldn't believe how long the discussions inside were about that. Every generation before us had the same. You yes. and I saw the basic same thing, except for I had the, you know, the, the, the gauges. Like, the, remember the deep ones in Gen yep. 5, we had to light up? So what we did is we said, no, we're gonna change that to center around the cockpit. So when you sit in a Mustang nowadays, it, now I'm, you know, we're going straight, but I feel like with this curve and how the screen is set up, I feel like I'm in the cockpit. And we it's, did that on purpose. And so when I was sitting over there earlier, I definitely felt that it felt very familiar, even though it's new. Yeah. And then the other thing was, okay, so I'm six foot three, wonderful leg room in here. <laughs> For those of us that are taller, seats pretty comfortable, but uh, give us some razzmatazz so, using old, old so, school. So old school. So the yeah. new gaming technology is programmed, like Rocket League, for yep. example, is programmed under what they call the Unreal technology. So our designers and interior engineers work with the Unreal team and develop this on here so that when you go in here to the My Mustang, this is Unreal gaming technology that is literally, you can change the angle of the car yep. in there, generating the image as we go. And like you can go to custom mode, for example, and say, all right, you know what, now I'm on normal or calm. Hmm, I want to go to, let's go back into the base drive. Oh, this is profile one. So let's go back in over here to the custom mode, and then we can do the cluster theme, right? So we're in the calm cluster screen. I'm not yep. very busy, yep. but no, I want to do track. So now you have your RPM band in there. Oh, you know what else I want to do? I want to do, mm, I'm feeling a little Fox body-ish. Yeah. So, which is, which is a Mustang 30 years ago. Yep, from 87 to 93, Fox yep. Body is what we chose. And those graphics now are in that Fox yes. Body configuration. Okay, so let's say I want to go back to track. So I'm in the track theme, and now I want to change my exhaust. I can change my exhaust mode on here from normal to quiet to sport to track. And then if I need to know what it is, I hit the information button and it pulls up and tells you not only what it's doing, but how it's doing it. So that you're getting that education yeah, while you're yeah. doing it. And then if you go to the track apps, which is some of my favorite. So you see in here, you know, do you really need rev match? You and I talked about it. It's old. Yeah, it, it, I was saying, well, all real men heel and toe. Heel and for toe. For those that understand old school driving. And, yeah. and now but, you have the rev match in it. But when you hit the rev match button, it shows then where it is hitting and changing it. So it's saying, okay, on the rev match, it's going to impact how your tires and wheels are going. Yes. Right on the entrance. If you go to launch control, you go in here to launch control. Now you have launch control enabled. And you can see it changes in the lights on here. Now, every car singly that I know needs a drift brake. <laughs> Vaughn Gittin Jr. in 2010 told me I was absolutely untrainable. Untrainable for drifting. So our men and women of the Ford Performance Group worked on the Focus RS, all-wheel drive, torque vectoring, and, drift stick, and I was able to learn how to do it. And so was that out of pity for you? I, they, they felt bad for me. Yes. <laughs> but our audience wants to do it. So if you go to the drift brake in here. They should and, call it the Jim Owens mode. <laughs> that's the Jim Owens. Yeah. Then it comes up here, if you see it, it yes. shows you what it is that the wheels are doing and what you're going to be doing while you're doing it. And that Unreal technology is generating that. 
So what we're really what we're really excited about is that you can and I can't do line lock because you know we're in not car not on inside so it's yep, disabled yep. in here. But when line lock comes in, it locks it for 15 seconds so you can do your smoky burnout and then shows the actual wheel and tire doing a burnout on your dash. So these are the things that you know you don't need in a car, but if you're trying to get the personalization of performance to get what is core to Mustang, because you know, think of SEMA and all yes. the things that people do to Mustangs. Now this younger generation can do it from a technological standpoint to personalize their performance, and we're so excited about it. Are you guys going to offer personalization on the dealership level for the exterior and interior and that type of stuff? The marketplace takes care of that. Now we have Ford Performance, obviously, in our accessories group that will have yes. stuff on there. Um, you know, we have the stripes and the wheel packages that we normally have. Um, the SEMA group, you know, that that audience yeah. also starts to develop stuff on there. But you know, what we've learned is, if I was able to create absolutely every configuration from Mustang somebody would still want to do something different, right? So the aftermarket's still going to have a position there, and we think they're going to play nicely in this. So basically what you've done is you have set the platform, and you've taken the platform to a certain level, Yep. and then for those, SEMA being Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association, the aftermarket guys can then do... Still want to play with it. Yes. Still want to play with it. And yep. that's that's part of being Mustang. Um, so you, like the, the, let me go back to my color. So this is fun. My color used to be, you'd pick either 12, 16 configurable colors. I now remember. for your displays yep. and your ambient lighting, you can do color and brightness, but you can see it's almost infinite. Yes. Where you can change. So that's primary, and then change the purple. Secondary in here, then I'm gonna change the secondary to the green. You know, think of the, who's the comedian that does the, that does the little character with the, the purple and green character, the ventriloquist. Anyways, I did the purple and green. That's how he painted his GT, actually. Um, <laughs> good story. Um, so then you can change, these are all these configurable things that we're really excited for people to get into. So for those that need assistance with their homework, does this also help with that? Yes, it does. <laughs> and, and so is that very Artificial like in the intelligence. Yes. You, have to, you have to put in the special code to get yeah. your okay. term paper written. Oh, so that would be the parents can put in the special code. Got exactly. It. That's where you put it in settings and then you put it in my mode, right? Yeah. You put it over there and you can lock it out. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you can call the Ford assistant. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Great piece. Shall we take a look at the dark horse? Yes, yeah, let's do the dark horse. So new car, dark horse. We'll take a look at that in just a sec. Yep, looking forward to it. All right, aficionados, we're standing next to the dark horse. This is really the first truly new, new nameplate under the Mustang lineage. 21 since. years. And so the last one would have been the boss. Bullet. Bullet, yes. Bullet was the yes. first the, that the first right. version of the bullet yeah. 21 years ago. Yeah. So we don't take it lightly when we bring a new nameplate in. Um, and you know we've been around for a while and we've redone the GT 350 right and the Shelby GT 500 and the Boss 302 and the Mach 1 and three versions of the bullet and the Cal Special. We still haven't yes. done the Blue Bonnet or Twister edition in a while. Um, <laughs> but we we take those seriously because the, they mean something. Each of those individual ones have a specific DNA. And as I've told you, we're trying to evolve into the 21st century. If I, if I can just cut in here for a sec. So what you just heard there, very succinctly, is the difference between a mark and a brand. <laughs> that is a mark, where he's talking about the heritage and each of these pieces having succinct DNA versus a brand, which is toothpaste from refrigerators and stuff. Continue, please, Mr. Holmes. So the fact that I did it succinctly, you've yes. been around me very long, that's surprising in and of itself. <laughs> um, so when we thought about doing this, the dark horse was a, it was an attitude, right? Mustang is never mean. And so when you say we, who is we? So designers, the program team, the product marketing team, a lot of the Ford family and some of the leadership of uh, like Farley, who races Mustangs yes. on the week, so just Jim down Farley, at Daytona. CEO. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I mean, th those people are you know, obviously provide input, but the Mustang team working on it, you, you, Mustang doesn't want to be mean, right? Like we're an inviting family, but that inviting family still needs not only offensive linemen, but it needs a big fullback and a great halfback behind it. Yep. And so what we did with the dark horse is it's the thing you didn't see coming. 
right? So it is aggressive and it is not sinister, but that dark horse that you're not sure where it was coming from. And you can see that from the front end and the guys did a great job. The guys and gals did a great job of the design. Um, the next thing you see, which is the dark horse emblem yes. and the badge. Now, as you know, from 1964 and a half, 65, You've always seen the pony, the yes. galloping pony, yep. somewhere yep. on that yep. car. This is the first one where we've done the forward-facing horse. So that's the dark horse that's coming out from that dark tunnel, coming out to get you and to lead the team there. So we have that front-facing horse on there. That is the first time we've done that. And again, a lot of discussion amongst the team on how we do it, on how the nostrils flared. Yes. Like you can actually get in there and see yep. where they did the nostrils and on the actual yep. logo, not the badge. Yes. They like spent time on how the nostrils would flare because as that horse is breathing, it's it, it's interesting. It's cool. I, mean, I, could, I could go off on a whole dissertation on this for another time, but yeah, I get it. Yep. And now, if you think about it, that ties to dual air box coming yep. in. So we, what we're doing in there, and we don't have the engines open. This is a pre-production vehicle yet, but you have dual cold air boxes on each side that come into a dual throttle body that melts the air in. Yeah. So what you end up having is a freer flow of air mm -hmm. to help get you more horsepower. Yep. That leads us to the fourth generation Coyote motor producing 500 horsepower. Fantastic engine too, because I remember when I tried it, my first Coyote experience was in a Boss 302. I love and those. Just, oh. uh, with the connecting rods and the pistons. I still have the pistons sitting up on my desk at home. I love that, the fact of how we did it and changed the interior of it. it just great stories. But yes, yeah. that's a, one of the, the, the Coyote motors that yeah, we're I'm proud of. Yeah, I'm tempted to start going off on a direction, but continue with our tour. <laughs> so you as you go down, now this is the appearance package with the handling package as well. And this is this color is unique to the handling package. So it's unique on Dark Horse and it's unique on Mustang. So you're not going to get that ember glow on any other car well, other than can, the appearance package. So can you choose any color in the Mustang palette and put no. on a dark horse? There's only going to be four okay. total on the dark horse. We haven't released any of the stuff yet from the order guide, that type of stuff. Um, but yes, there will be four colors that you can choose on the dark horse on the appearance package. Okay. So, and but this is the one with the stripes, as you can see up on there, yep. without the, yep. the, the the design of it. And then yeah, that rear sloping, yes. yep, you can see that color differentiation from body color in the gray and then the black that ties into this. Um, and then you see the quad tip black exhausts. Those are as large as what was on the Mach 1 and the GT500. See, this is interesting because this, this looks very GT500-esque from the back. Yep. Uh, you know, you could even say GT350 with a wing. And just kind of the stance where it is more aggressive. Yep. There's more going on that, that says this this mother wants to stance. run. That's yes. exactly right. That power that you can generate from your hips as you go forward. But the that's way what comes the way you have done the color accenting here is really it, it's because it I did is. not see this in the original photo. No, 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 we didn't. And, and yeah. it was on the car, but we had it a little bit different. Yeah. Um, this is actually one of the pre-production vehicles, so this I'd is like closer to, to what's going to be represented. To see what the it color is. Really and, is, and the color flipping. It's not like <laughs> Mystachrome. Do you remember the old Mystic and Mystachrome? SVTs yep. that had that color flip in it yep. and it went from purple to green. This has some of that color flake. You can see like right here, some of the yes, bronze right. aspect of it. Yes. So if you change your yes. angle, the light coming in will change this, the ember glow, right? That goes to that bronze coloring. And outside in the, in the sunlight and in that twilight haze yeah. really picks up a different feel for it. And then of course, Got to be about the tennis shoes, right? So we're working with Pirelli for a specific tire for this vehicle. Um, they worked to develop it in there. And of course, the Brembo brake calipers on there. And then on the appearance package here and the performance and handling package, you get the unique blue and the blue with the Brembo just for the dark horse. Yep. So it's not the same size as the GT500 massive Brembos, right? Because it doesn't weigh quite as much as it, but it is the Brembos for that package. And then the hub on spoke that we've used it's, for the GT 500s and 350s. This is, uh, yeah, because on my um, Shelby GT, I ended up securing some KR wheels with yes. the titanium. Yeah. Well, I like this just as much as that. No, it is. is really nice. And then there's a there's a choice <laughs> of wheel on the handling package as well. So that's the dark horse. Welcome to the best Mustang we've ever done.
so what's um, can you give us approximate uh, starting prices on these? We things? haven't announced pricing yet. Um, it, we're saying it's going to be available in the dealerships early summer. Okay. Um, so pricing and ordering and that type of stuff will be coming up before that early summer time frame. Perfect. Anything else we need to hit on here? You, uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty good. Cool. So hang in there because Jim and I are going to do a little personal discussion to give you some background on him. And he's just, this guy's got lots of good stories. And as if you couldn't tell, it's not like he's not enthusiastic. And uh, I'm really looking, normally I'd say I'm looking forward to seeing you on the road. So now I'm going to say I'm really looking forward to seeing the dark horse on the road. We'll see you in a minute.